Good afternoon, everyone. As the beast from the east, otherwise known as the European Super Freeze, starts to retreat back over Central Asia, all these stories keep coming across the newswire talking about the Arctic being above freezing. Right here we go. Today's temperatures minus 24 degrees Celsius. Then you have to go down somewhere around 70 degrees north to even find 1.5 C, which is nowhere even close to 45 or 50 degrees, as the media claims. Joe Bastardi talking about the blocking patterns setting up like the 1950s and 60s, looking at the last solar cycle comparisons. And while this beast from the east rolled over Europe, why is the media not widely reporting the record snows through Croatia? You got to get creative when you have this much snow. A one hour blip in the media as snow was supposed to be a thing of the past, yet rolls all the way down into Rome, Venice, ice pillars because of minus 40 degrees Celsius. You got incredibly long and tall icicles in Hungary, Danish coast freezing, Danish canals, people ice skating. And that ice during the European super freeze seemed to be a thing from North Italy through Switzerland over into the UK and everywhere in between. Now up in Ireland, all-time record snows. Kildar, look how deep it is there. Snows and waves in Spain, and now there's dust storms blowing off North Africa. I'm going to wrap up the European super freeze and what the media didn't cover because it just doesn't fit the global warming narrative. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt2030 and click that bell so you can get the latest updates. That beast from the east, the European super freeze that broke hundreds of thousands of cold and snow records over the last week and a half through Europe and Asia, retreating back over Central Asia. It'll eventually reconnect and then go right back over the Arctic, bringing extreme cold temperatures all the way through the spring. As we get out in through the ninth, you can see how it's retreating back up to the normal polar regions. Now, I keep getting an enormous amount of messages across my board asking about this. Mainstream media reporting on well above normal temperatures in the Arctic, even up to 45, 50 degrees Fahrenheit already. And I said, well, let me look into this. You have to literally go down to at least 70 degrees north latitude, possibly down to 68 or 67 degrees north latitude to even find something that would be 1.5 degrees Celsius, which would be right around... 34 and a half to 35 degrees Fahrenheit. I marked the green circle there where I could find the warmest temperature, the closest to the Arctic itself up at the North Pole at 90 degrees. Now I've linked everything below so you can get to this exact same chart on Null School and then you can move forward and back in time and look at the temperatures yourself. But when we take a look directly over the Arctic from just yesterday's temperatures and they were saying that it's even going to get warmer today. Well, I'm looking at minus 24 degrees Celsius. And anywhere you see red, especially over Greenland, is minus 40. So this is what's being put out in the news, that the Arctic is all-time record warm. But here are the actual measurements. How can there be such a difference in reported temperatures and what the news media is putting out there? Also, taking a look at the solar cycles, during this time, we are entering the grand solar minimum. There's no doubt about it. There are scientists from every country coming out now to say that we are heading into some cooling phase. Look at the last solar cycle comparisons. That light purple, that's where we are for solar cycle 24. And then solar cycle 25 will be below that. And my money's riding on John Casey's predictions because he's been the most correct along this entire journey from years ago predicting solar cycles that were going to be below average until now and him calling out the grand solar minimum. John Casey's putting it at below 50 for solar cycle 25. And interestingly enough, the forecast that had come out from NASA were putting our solar cycle three years out still until we hit bottom, but it looks like we're close to it right now. Now the grand solar minimum is a repeating cycle. It's quite easy in history to look to see where the effects were felt because it's a population decline, economic decline, crop losses and population migration. That is the fingerprint of the grand solar minimum. So just use a history book, go back through time and see when those events occurred and then come over to temperature charts over the last 2000 years with the GISP ice core data. 
and they'll match up perfectly. Anyway, talking about smaller cycles, not on a multi-century cycle, but let's talk about cycles on 50 years, 20 years, 60 years for the AMO. Joe Bastardi has pegged that this type of blocking pattern and jet stream movements is matching up with something in the 1950s and 60s. Again, it's a repeating cycle. And also the AMO has officially turned cold, which just generally means cooler temperatures and more moisture across Europe as that what would have been the warming conveyor belt cools slightly. That's just a natural cycle, though. That does not have anything to do with what's happening with the sun. This is really interesting here. This is the month of March from 1955 to 1970 compared with the temperature anomalies from 1981 to 2010. This also matches right up with that same cycle of cooling back in the 1960s. So we'll see what happens as we go through March. Now the news media didn't widely cover this, especially not in the United States and especially not in other countries outside of Europe because Global warming narrative is a very localized thing. They have to report it in the local media because you're seeing it with your eyes. Otherwise, it's not widely reported. It's one degree Celsius over temperature and it's a global front page news article that runs for a week. Coldest temperatures in 150 years sweep through Europe and it's not even a peep over in most of the media outside Europe. So anyway, this event had started back uh, just in the very last week of February and you can see some of the temperatures here that started what was considered the European super freeze that swept over the UK, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, March 2nd approximately, but you can see those temperatures well below normal. And I was told snow would be a thing of the past. And we all heard Al Gore saying snow will be a thing of the past. We have to raise a tax for you globally and tax everything you do, everything you buy, and everywhere you go, and everything with energy that you use because you're driving the climate with CO2. Snow would be a thing of the past. Yet let's look at Croatia. This was the beginning of the European super freeze. About the third day into it, they started to get record snows all across Eastern Europe. From Poland down to Montenegro and everywhere in between, Croatia heavily hit. In Gorski, Kotar, snows were so deep on the side of the road after the snow plows came through the drifts were, you know, 12, 15 feet tall in some places. So the locals, of course, using food coloring dye to do a little bit of artwork. I thought that was amazing. This is one of my favorite pictures so far out of this entire weather event that spanned two weeks. Then we get over into Bulgaria. Again, record snows breaking thousands of records. And these records were going back into the early 1900s. In Puglia, Italy as well. Look how deep that is and snow is supposed to be a thing of the past. That's why they were trying to put in this global CO2 tax. And then we're getting snows as far south as Rome with the Colosseum. You saw a lot of these images coming out. Venice, coastal areas, the canals started to freeze due to the cold temperatures. I mean, the media was just a couple pretty pictures. Move on, global warming somewhere in there. And again, not widely reported was, how about Western Spain? I understand it's going up to a ski area, but the blizzard that they had with the enormous amount of snow, the driving winds, smashing waves, coastal Portugal here. And then the temperatures dropped. And when I'm talking about Poland temperatures going to minus 45 degrees Celsius that are bringing on these light pillars when the air crystallizes, what I mean by that is the air temperature drops so much that the water that's suspended in the air actually turns into ice crystals. And you start to get these amazing light pillars. We saw several in Canada last year. It's just when that humidity turns into ice in the air, you get these just refraction coming out the light, beautiful. We jump over to Hungary during that same time, icicles coming off the building. They were trying to measure this one to see if it was any type of record within the country. Some say yes, some say no. Still, be, still needs to be officialized. But then the storm just kept rolling on. March 3rd over into Holland. You know, I had an enormous amount of people saying, well, it's like 50 degrees here. Well, it couldn't be 50 degrees if they're skating on the canals. Now, could it? So a lot of the things that I even get, I'm wondering how many trolls are out there paid to put misinformation across the comments inside my videos because when I get comments that's saying, 
hey, it's nice and warm, it's 10 degrees Celsius right now here, and, and we're in Holland, and then I get these exact same pictures that are have to be below freezing, extreme cold to keep that ice that thick on the canals, people skating, no less, with snow still visible on the ground, and then coastal as well, you got these nice ice, I guess, flowers forming. Ice pancakes starting to form off the coast as well. And then the storm front just kept pushing west. Denmark, heavy, heavy snows. And then we come over into Republic of Ireland, the whole area, Ireland, Wales, Scotland, just pummeled with snow. Areas down in England as well. But Dublin receiving all-time record snows. I mean, literally all-time record snows back to 150 years of records kept. But this is just something normal that, oh, it's just in one little tiny place. Don't worry about it. And Wales as well, breaking snow records. People snowed in, you know, doors halfway up. They have to climb out their window and shovel through their house to get out of the doors. UK Snow Report on Twitter probably has the best array of images as well as severe weather EU. And one thing that was also accompanying this storm was this freezing rain that came down. And I don't care where you went across this storm front that rolled for weeks from the UK over to Switzerland, over into Italy, Turkey. It doesn't matter where you went, this freezing rain accompanied this on the backside of the uh, storm front. Interesting how the mix up in the jet streams is causing something like this. This is exactly what they had talked about during the Dalton minimum, the Spore minimum, and the Monitor minimum as how their crops got destroyed. This is what led to famines and this is what led to population migration. And we're still not talking about this. They're in the media pushing out that even though they have to admit absolutely that the grand solar minimum is here, it's intensifying. They're admitting it now in the media. Everybody's trying to cover their jobs, cover their careers. Now they're giving you misinformation that it's only going to be three tenths of a degree Celsius because of the total solar irradiance. I'll agree. Total solar irradiance is only one single facet of the entire mix. They keep focusing on that. The TSI is going to drop temperatures three tenths of a degree, but they don't talk about cosmic rays. They don't talk about increased volcanism. They don't talk about increased cloud cover, increased particulates, albedo effect, rainouts, heavier snows, ice. They don't talk about that. They just talk about TSI decreases. So there's a sliver of truth within the media but they're masking the true driver of what causes these grand solar minimum temperature decreases, the volcanic ash aerosols and the increasing cloud cover due to cosmic rays. They're not touching that with a 10 foot pole. They keep focusing on TSI. And now we have other jet stream anomalies pushing huge amounts of Saharan dust. Now that white cloud line up there, that's the European super freeze colliding with this Saharan dust. Not normal. And again, this is particulates that add into the snow and then it starts to mix. And you can really clearly see the dust mixing into the cloud patterns here. A bit wide out for you. And in the southern Mediterranean, you start to get all this dust, uh, rain dropping out of the sky. And then it's passing on over Sicily. Then I found the dust storm forecast map, which is interesting. I didn't even know they had this. University of Athens maintains this total dust load. Talking about micrograms per square meter. Forecasted and it does something and it's pushing west over through the Mediterranean. Now, I do want to leave you with something here, Electric Universe proponents. Our societies prior to this built an enormous amount of structures underground. Most of them have been destroyed, moved, uh, used for road building construction, or just you know wiped out to put a neighborhood there, building, whatever. There were millions of these across our planet, and you really need to understand and ask yourself, why did they build millions of structures underground? Massive, massive storm swept this planet based on the electric universe, the models from the sun and the changes we're starting to experience. Bring me right here because when these storms start to intensify from this point forward into 2020, you will understand why the ancients moved underground cities, 
and societies. And I want to leave you with this last slide here. I have a lot of people asking me, can you put out a forecast? You know when the weather is going to intensify. This is it right here. We're just in the first I would consider a year of strong amplification. Last year, that last six months, I would consider sort of a, a breath, a, a puff of intensification. This year, it's definitely going to show intense movement forward with the weather systems, but that's nothing, nothing to what is coming. 2019 to 20, it increases four times from the ferocity of what we're seeing right now. Southern Hemisphere is on tap to just, they're already getting record cold down in Australia. They've had anomalous floods, 100-year floods, 200-year floods, months of rain and single storms, and it just continues, and the glaciers in New Zealand are growing, and Tasmania had three summer snows. We've seen nothing yet for the amplification, nothing. And I cannot say that strongly enough. You need to really start to get prepared. This was a single storm that's coming out of Europe that I'm covering here, but it just shows how out of balance our jet streams are becoming due to the weakening magnetosphere. When we get up into 2020 and 2021 and we're losing global crop production and your food prices are five, ten times more expensive than they are today and economies are crumbling across the planet due to never-ending food increases, you're going to understand why they're introducing cryptocurrency. You're going to understand that this is a society changing event, a reset button for everything you know on this planet is going to change by 2021. And we're not even into the depths of it at that point. The depths and the coldest as this rebounds, slaps together again and then re-expands. 2024, 2025 is when we're going to get the rollover again. You understand it's two waves happening here. This first amplification wave is the split and our jet streams are going to go wandering. Then they're going to spring back and sandwich back again. And then they're going to expand and split again. And when they try to recompress and, and come back to normalcy, if you consider it that, around 2024 and 2025, they're going to try to re-expand again at the same time as they're crunching back together. This is literally a once in a 400 year or once in a 2000 year event coming up here. This is why I do the channel. And I also just moved my residence so I could have more of an urban garden. I have two 20 foot long balconies facing south and I'm going to start a video series here using heirloom seeds and organic seeds from True Leaf Market to show that you can do an urban garden enough to feed at least the basics for all the vegetables you need plus extra so you can trade. You can find the links to the heirloom seed and organic garden. They have a huge selection from sprouting all the way over to planting and everything in between, including wheat grass. Huge selection is kind of an understatement. Their seed quality is amazing. TrueLeafMarket.com, links below. You can support me that way. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Our time is truly up. We are out of time and I really hope you're getting prepared. There's so little time left right now.